Behind every bit of mom wisdom is a story. A story of a real mom and real kids just trying to love each other well. Whether you're cozied up on the couch with a mug of coffee or out for a walk, you're welcome to join us as we share stories and laugh, learn, and grow together. It's the I'm Mom Podcast. Welcome to this week's episode of the I'm Mom Podcast. Megan, Chloe, Susan, and Abby with you once again. So several months ago, I came across a story that kind of made me chuckle and roll my eyes a little bit. And then I sat back and I thought, I'm going to write an article about this. And so I wanted to start this episode by telling you guys about it and getting your take. It is about um, Elon Musk, well, his girlfriend at the time, Grimes, the artist, the singer. I didn't know her. She's a musician. Together, they have three kids. Did you wow. know? I thought I had three. Did you know that Elon Musk yeah. has eleven what children from what? different with who? Oh, that's j- many women. Wow. Yes. I know. No judgment. Just no. I had maybe no idea, a little bit though. of judgment, but yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, so in an interview with Vogue, Grimes said that being a this is quote being a mother feels weird to say. For some reason, I don't identify with that word. She said her son calls her by her first name, which is Claire. What a beautiful name. Um, he doesn't say mama. And she said, maybe he can sense my distaste for the word mother. And I'm not judging her. I'm just sharing the fact of what exactly what she said. And that part that really got me was um, she doesn't identify with the word mother. Mm. And so today I want to talk about the identity crisis that some women face when they change their name from Chloe to mom or Megan to mom or Susan or Abby to mom. And yeah. we, we stop being us, the person that we've always been, and we become somebody else. So do you guys feel like becoming a mom or becoming, quote, mom made you feel more like yourself? Or was it more like you were becoming a new version of you? Or did you feel like you didn't recognize yourself anymore? I feel like with my first, it was very foreign. I I felt we had just moved to, so I almost felt like I was in a weird alternate universe because mm. I like wasn't familiar with the area. I didn't have family or friends close by. I had this thing that was like constantly this uh, basically thing. You're talking about the baby. Yes. Thing. Okay. Yes. Gotcha. Uh, so <laughs> it was very foreign to me at first and it just kind of I'm such an extrovert and I love and I'm high energy so I love to go and do and So I felt very kind of trapped at first. Um, I also had a really rough first pregnancy and delivery. So I think that had to play in it because I had a tough recovery too. So that was like a whole nother level to it. But I definitely felt it took me a a minute to kind of ease into being a mom and to thinking about this tiny human that I was now in charge of taking care of and raising and and whatnot. Second was much easier to me. It felt very second nature. Uh, but first, I think was yeah. tough. Yeah. Well, Chloe, when you earlier you were talking, and you said, like, off air, you said, oh, my son. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, Chloe yeah. has a son. Like, it, it's so wonderful to hear you say it. So like how this is so brand new for you. Yeah. And you're not hearing him say mama yet. But yeah. like, how have you felt about this new? Yeah. New identity? You know, I had a really tough, I would say weeks five, weeks five to 10 were really tough. You know, my son was really colicky. He's kind of coming out of it now, but I honestly like had a bunch of like, I would call it like postpartum rage. I would get very angry very quickly about, um, not being able to leave the house, not being able to, you know, you get away for an hour, but that's not enough. I was also honestly trying to take on too much. Um, I didn't want to give him bottles. I was wanting to kind of like keep a lot of responsibilities for myself. So I think I I do think I made that a little bit worse. Um, once I started to give up that control, I really started to experience more joy. And I think I've never felt more like myself. Um, I'm going to get emotional. <laughs> um, like I don't remember life before him. And like I just – I've never felt more purposed in who I am. Mm. I remember like in the hospital when the nurse was like, all right, mom. I'm like, who? I know. Like, she's not <laughs> here. She's at home still. Like, she she, she went home. <laughs> like, talking about my mom, my mom, you know? Like, there's no mom here. It's just, it's like, wow, I have a new name now. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Did you guys, do you feel like you have any identity issues with that? Like, for me, I know that... I, my first time back to work, which was kind of like what you did, Chloe, I was still on maternity leave, but I had to go back in for something. 
and I dropped my baby off at my mother-in-law's house, I was like, whoa, I listened, like I turned, I put the windows down, I listened to music and I was like singing along and it wasn't a baby kind of song. Like it wasn't a lullaby. I was like, oh my gosh, it's me again. Yeah. It's, it's definitely like hard to, cause you just, you jump in like both feet, all of a sudden you go from being pregnant to being mom and there's no time off. Yeah. And so I, for me, I definitely was like, which, which me is the real me? But it's weird because- I'm here in the office and I'm so different than I was the last time I was in the office. Like I was telling Susan, like, I'm so happy to be here. But then I also feel like part of me is at home with Mm -hmm. my husband, like a little part of my heart is, you know, I don't know. It's like living outside of myself. Mm -hmm. It's weird. Yeah. So speaking of your husband, then how about in relation to your husband? Like, how do you guys feel like you know, you go from this woman who your husband desires to being the woman who nurses his mm. his children or picks up his kids from school. You know, it's every age. It's not just to new moms. Like you, for so many years, you are the wife, but now you're wife and mom. Well, it is a change because you're dividing your attention again. Mm-hmm. Like you go from just yourself to then dividing, you know, oh, I got to compromise with this person and, you know, put his needs first half the time at least, hopefully mm-hmm. more. But then you have this baby and it's like a little more all absorbing, uh, or is that the right word? Consuming because they need you so much that I definitely feel like in the beginning it was hard for Mark. No, I feel like I, maybe it's because I'm quality time. That's my love language, but I almost feel like I wanted to be out with just him more. Oh yeah. I was like, I don't want us to be out with the kids or whatever. I, I want it to just be us too. So that was, I feel like a big, not, not necessarily a switch. Cause I think I was like that before, but I was like, I think I want it to be just us two again without a child. Yeah. There. You were missing that. Yeah. yeah. Why aren't you going out tonight then? You have to go out tonight. I told I'm you. Over I'm and I'm <laughs> you're, you're going out tonight with him. He wants to go out. <laughs> I love it. I think it gets easier. I mean, now with the my kids being 10 and 12, you know, I definitely feel more like wife again, right. wife and right. mom. But yeah. when you have a newborn at home mm-hmm. and you're like, I Whoa, do not feel it ain't right. romantic. No, I don't feel <laughs> yeah, sexy. No, I no. do not. Like he grabs, gra- gives you a pat on the butt and you're like, no, don't, you touch don't, don't touch me. Don't touch me. Right, now. <laughs> right, right. And you're nursing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. Yeah. But it's hard to, it, it hasn't really changed for him, right? Yeah. I mean, he's, still loves you and is attracted to you. And so it's like, you're trying to figure out. It's tough on that level. (laughs) It's tough. I mean, just like, honestly, like the physical changes you're going through and like literally having a creature on you all the time. Like I call my son, James, my little alien boy sometimes. Cause he's just like, I don't know. It's like a little creature on me all the time. So when Trent (laughs) comes up to me, (laughs) wants to touch me, I'm like, don't Mm. touch me. (laughs) I've had enough. (laughs) enough. It is hard. But it's not Trent's fault. No, I think know? something too that was an identity thing for me that would be different is I didn't go back to work right away. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I worked for a bank and I did corporate lending and then was a regional marketing manager. And so all of a sudden being, oh, you yeah. know, people would, I I was, for all the people I went into corporate lending with, we, we were in this big class and a lot of them were still working. Most of them had not had children yet. So it's like, what do you do all day? Oh, and I was yeah. like, hmm. You know, so there was an almost um, devaluing because I was- uh, That was a huge adjustment. I'd, I'd gone from, you know, a work person to, oh, you're a mom. Well, you know, no, it doesn't mean I've lost my brain. No, yeah. yeah. So talking about going back to work, mommy brain can definitely affect work. And when you give birth, so I learned this, when you give birth, your brain actually redesigns itself. What? Yeah. It like trims old connections and it builds new ones. And so the brain learns to understand what others might be thinking and perceiving, which is why as a new mom, you know, oh, he's crying and he needs this. Or, you know, you're not like just guessing. You're using kind of like, okay, well, it's the time, but it's also like the sound. Mm. And it's just like how your brain has adapted to being a mom. The brain doesn't know about the modern work environment. Those connections that got trimmed might have been the one that relied, that you relied on to get your job done. Oh no. So like we, there's the whole thing about, oh, I have mommy brain. It's actually a real thing because your brain has changed to accommodate being it is, it is wild. Is it not so cool? So like, this is just something I've kind of noticed recently, but I can tell what kind of cry it is. Mm. Like from the other room, they'll be like, your your baby's crying. And I'm like, oh, it's fake. 
like it's not real like or i can like i go running when it's actually the hurt yeah cry um or not only that but he'll he's like he's one and a half he's not talking he'll say a few words but it's mostly gibberish <laughs> and <laughs> people will be like what does he want and i'm like oh he's saying this or he yeah. wants this and i know exactly what it is it'll be something as specific as like a snack yeah. or like it's just so wild how moms can interpret what their kids are saying well, and they're not even saying actual words and here's what will boggle your mind i'll watch videos that i took of my kids when they were one and a half and two and like i'm the only one that knew what they were yeah. saying and i don't understand it now wow oh, no. yeah. Yeah. i know i'm like what are you saying there and the boys know what they were saying Aww. but i'm like what is that so it's wow. like yeah. my brain has snipped those. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I don't know if I got the work brain back. I don't know what I'm, what <laughs> I know now. Just gray now. <laughs> yeah. This is bad for us. Cause I told Chloe today, she's got to get up on big query and GA4 I and she's going to be like scrambling um, to get those connections back luck. in her brain. Yeah. I'm going to have to type in a chat GPT. <laughs> <laughs> she's going to be giving me yeah. fake answers that she got off of AI. AI. <laughs> so if you are struggling with your mom identity and your professional identity, Harvard business review says um, there are some suggestions. I want to hear your reactions to them. One of them is to rethink success. So where it used to be like maybe success in a day for you was checking off every box and learning a new program or achieving a new whatever. Now it's like, well, I got to work and I got my kid to daycare and everybody <laughs> is <low> dressed. <laughs> and I didn't have spit up on my outfit. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the outfit, I came to work like in a outfit that I'm, I look put together. Yeah. I am clean. Like it's not the same success, but it is still success. Or yeah. well, I, my hair was done today. I, yeah. I watched it. Mm -hmm. it. Yeah. So true. Yep. So another tip from Harvard Business Review was to rethink yourself. And instead of feeling like your identity has been disrupted, think of it as having been expanded. Rebrand. Yeah. Yeah. That's a very a nice way of putting it. <laughs> rebrand. You yeah. expanded physically and mentally. <laughs> yeah. No, I think that's awesome, though. It's not that you're not yourself. You're just a different version of yourself yeah. that is hopefully a better version because now you have these people to love and yeah. who love you. Yeah. I'll tell you what. I've only been at this motherhood thing for three months, but I have so much respect for every single mom out there. Mm -hmm. Like, like... Yeah. Clap it up for yeah. moms. Yeah. yeah. This is yeah. tough work, y'all. It is. So another thing on like mom identity, do you guys feel like you're naturals? At first, no. <laughs> yeah. Like, did it come easy to you? No. no. I didn't grow up in the in the age of social media where I was analyzing other mm. moms. So I was in the bubble. Yeah. You know, it was just my world. I had nothing to really compare it to. So it didn't bother me. I didn't. You know, I couldn't even Google stuff. So See, it was kind of, yeah. you just kind of relaxed into it. Hey, they're happy. They're crying. Hmm, is that colic? Well, maybe who knows? Yeah. I, maybe I take it back. So I actually feel better about my parenting at this age, having a four-year-old and a one-and-a-half-year-old than I do at the newborn stage. I just feel like the newborn stage is not my thing. <laughs> it's just like I do not feel good about anything I'm doing during <laughs> that time. I don't feel like I'm doing anything right. Whereas at this stage, I feel a little bit better about how I'm parenting and 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 whatnot. I feel like I just have more. You um, had some newborn scares that the fragility of that. Yeah, maybe that was probably in, in both yeah. your boys. Yeah, in both your boys. So it. you get very nervous about that newborn stage because you had some scares. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah so. probably. But I also never felt uh, like that super motherly. Yeah. yeah. Newborn bubble. I was like, grow up, grow well, up. <laughs> well, and there's, to Susan's point, this age that we're living in, there are these stupid videos on like TikTok and Reels that are like, Here's a realistic day in the life with my newborn. And it's like time stamped. And it's like, my child slept in their crib from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. And then from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. It's like, that is not what my day looked mm -hmm, like. Yeah. So, like, I had to banish myself from those yeah. videos. I'm like, I'm not watching this. Well, Chloe, you're an overachiever. You've said that you, I mean, you're good at everything you do. Like, I've not seen you not achieve something that you've gone after. And, Thanks. like, some women who are that... Then when they have a baby and the baby's not easy or the baby's not sleeping the way that you... You can't control them. You can't control them. Can't. Like, they struggle. So, like, as somebody that measures, a, if I can speak for you, measures a little bit of her self-worth sometimes on achieving, like, how do you deal with him not sleeping the number of hours that yeah. the woman on TikTok's baby is sleeping? It has been a huge learning experience for me, and I'm learning so much. But, it, I mean, that's something I got to grow out of. It was never good for me, but it's something that I'm really having to challenge myself because it's 
ultimately what's best for not only my family, it's what's best for me to get out of that performance mentality. One of our writers, Lisa, is writing an article right now about um, motherhood imposter syndrome. And I just read like her pitch and she said this line that like really hit me. She said, and all the other new moms seem to know what they were doing for real. I was only pretending. And I was like, oh man, like that really, like you feel a little bit like I, I can't be doing this right. Like this is not who I am. They're the ones that are meant to be moms and I'm just kind of like Aww, yeah. flying by the seat of my pants. Yeah. But they're all looking at you thinking the same thing. Yeah. You know, that's the thing. We're all we're, we're all, all doing the same our thing. best. Yep. Yeah. So to wrap up this episode, I want to kind of fast forward a little bit. So I'm in the new the, the I'm in the middle stage. I'm not just now becoming mom. I'm becoming, I'm going from mama to mom. Like they're oh, dropping the mama thing. I know. Mom. Right. <laughs> right. They don't say bruh and that will never yeah. happen, but they do. They are kind of leaning away from mama and they're saying mom quite a bit more. And so I know I'll always be their mom, but like, what do you think a woman can do to avoid an identity crisis when your role as mom becomes more friend than mom? Or, you know, they leave the house or they don't need you like they did. Like, the identity issue morphs as your kids get older. I always tried to watch moms ahead of me in the game mm. to anticipate where it was going and be okay with that. Like, a- and see the positive in it. Like, oh, that'll be cool when they are like this mm-hmm. or like that. And, um, and it is a switch, but it's a it's a fun switch. And then I will say it gets really fun when they're in like college. Mm-hmm. There is a little tension, I feel like, in that 13, 14, 15 area where they're kind of trying to push the independence and, and you can't react to anything because they won't they but it's all good. I mean, every stage is different and fun. Yeah. Well, and I think too, even no matter what stage you're in, I think it was really important for me to still remember who I was and the things I like to do and getting quality time with my husband because that was super important to me and still taking trips together and having hobbies outside of my kids and us spending time together because once they leave, it will just be us. And so I love being a mom, but there was at at each stage I've tried to do things that are still still feel like me yeah. and and what I want to do because um, I think you have to do that. It, it's hard because you'll just get sucked into their schedules and everything they're doing. And I, I, my, my point being is I think you have to still do things for yourself mm-hmm. and not just be only mom. Yeah. Well, yeah. And then as things change, instead of looking at looking at it as what I'm missing that I didn't have before, it's like you just said, like now what is the new thing that that we get to do or that I get to do because the kids are moving out? You know, it's it's opportunities instead of um in t- instead of sacrifices or, you know, it's just I think a different way of looking at it. And if you have a good relationship um, all the way through, then your kids do end up being your friends. Megan and I are going to London together. We're not taking our husbands or our kids. We like to, we both love London. We both like to travel. And so you do find that you, you create these little traditions with your kids of things that, Hey, they become a friend. In Mm. fact, I, I, my kids, I have so many and they are my friends. I often find that I'm probably not spending enough time with my friends because I'm doing <laughs> stuff with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Love it. Well, chime in. Let us know what you think. You can uh, find this post on Instagram and leave a note in the comments about, you know, how maybe you struggled a little bit with your identity when you became a, a mom and what you have done to get your identity back. And thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to the iMom podcast. iMom is the motherhood program of the nonprofit organization Family First. Along with our fatherhood program, All Pro Dad, we exist to help you love your family well. Subscribe to our daily email, the iMom Minute, by going to imom.com slash subscribe and get tons of great ideas, insight, and inspiration. The iMom podcast is hosted by me, Abby Watts, along with Susan Merrill, Megan Tigner, and Chloe Blumenthal.